The brain is the most complex system in the known universe. Made up of billions of individual cells called neurons, the interplay between these cells processes our senses, allows us to learn and remember, controls our movements and emotions, and basically defines each and every one of us as individuals. The neuron itself is a specialized cell that is designed to propagate an electrical signal from one end to the other. The center power plant of the neuron is the cell body that contains the nucleus and other organelles critical to maintaining viability and cell function. The fine tendrils emanating from the cell body are the dendrites, and the main extension off the base of the neuron is called the axon, which is covered by a series of sausage-shaped electrical insulators called the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is predominantly fat and cholesterol and is necessary for normal electrical conduction up and down the axon. As a human baby matures, the various milestones of development, including smiling, sitting, crawling, and walking, are directly related to the orderly stages of myelination of the central nervous system, effectively turning on various pathways that control these functions. Similarly, Disease processes such as multiple sclerosis can damage the myelin sheath, leading to the characteristic features of that disease including motor and sensory dysfunction like difficulty swallowing or speaking, ataxia or loss of coordination, blindness and mood disorders including depression. In any electrical circuit, the flow of electrons is controlled by a switch. In this example of an electromagnet, when the switch makes contact across the poles, the battery pushes electrons through the coil of wire and the associated magnetic field picks up the small steel balls. When the switch is open, the flow of electrons and the associated magnetic field stop and the balls fall to the ground. A computer does all it does utilizing this simple principle of electricity. The current is either on, represented by the number one, or off, represented by the number zero. With a base two or binary mathematical construct, and billions of individual switches or transistors, the computer in front of you can calculate complex mathematical equations, pull information off the World Wide Web, or show you the video you're looking at right now. Similarly, our brains use a complex binary system of flowing electrons with billions of switches to do what we do each and every day, including moving our muscles, communicating with one another, as well as processing, understanding, and storing the information being presented to you right now. These switches are the small gaps or junctions between two adjacent neurons called the synapse. This example is called axodendritic, where the axon of the first communicates with the dendrite of the second neuron. We can also have axosomatic, where the axon of the first communicates with the cell body of the second neuron. Finally, we can have axoaxonic, where the axon of the first communicates with the axon of the second neuron. When an electrical signal propagates down the axon, it causes small chemical containing vesicles to burst open or degranulate. These chemicals, or neurotransmitters, spill out into the synapse and attach to receptors on the postsynaptic cleft or dendrite of the next target neuron. Once enough chemical is present, a threshold potential is reached, initiating a new electrical impulse down the neuron to the next synapse. To stop the neuron from firing continuously, the chemicals are broken down or degraded and eliminated from the body or, more likely, brought back up into the first neuron and recycled via transporters on the presynaptic cleft. There are over 100 known chemical neurotransmitters in the brain and body. Some of the more common ones are listed below. Some of these neurotransmitters are excitatory, causing the next cell to fire in their presence, while others are inhibitory and prevent the cell from firing in their presence.
combined with the fact that each neuron can communicate with between 5,000 and 200,000 other neurons provides the requisite complex architecture that allows us to function and learn with a simple binary construct of the neuron either being on or off. Serotonin is a chemical transmitter operating in the area of the brain that controls our mood. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, are a class of antidepressants that block the reuptake transporters on the presynaptic cleft. And keep serotonin in the synapse to treat debilitating depression. Acetylcholine is found at the junction of the nervous system and our skeletal muscles and causes our muscles to contract when signaled by the brain to do so. Botulinum toxin, or Botox, works by preventing the chemical containing vesicles in the presynaptic cleft from fusing with the axon membrane and degranulating when a sufficient electrical signal is present, resulting in the characteristic paralysis associated with this agent. The bite from the black widow spider, on the other hand, has the opposite effect, causing a massive degranulation of the presynaptic vesicles, resulting in severe and painful muscular spasm. Eventually, when the axons are depleted of all their acetylcholine, these patients will experience paralysis in the affected area. Succinylcholine is a medication used in the field of medicine that induces paralysis in patients to facilitate intubation or treat malignant hypertension by blocking the postsynaptic receptors of the neuromuscular synapse. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter found in many parts of the brain and facilitates functions such as the coordinated movement of our bodies as well as the reward center of our brains. For instance, the euphoric feeling you get when someone pays you a nice compliment or when you're enjoying a really good meal is mediated through the dopaminergic pathways of the brain. Cocaine is a chemical known as a TRI or triple reuptake inhibitor that blocks the presynaptic reuptake of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Increased levels of serotonin in the synapse improve the user's mood. Increased levels of norepinephrine in the synapse produces the characteristic agitation and hyperactivity while the increased dopamine levels are responsible for the intense and addictive rush or euphoria associated with cocaine use. Dopamine is also the key transmitter in coordinated movement and the loss of dopaminergic cells in the brain gives the characteristic clinical symptoms associated with Parkinson's disease. This also explains why people recovering from cocaine abuse can experience Parkinsonian type symptoms. In summary, the synapse is an electrochemical switch in our nervous system that defines who we are and facilitates everything we do on a daily basis. Disease processes and various toxins can affect these chemical signals and many of our medications exert their action by either blocking or enhancing these chemical transmissions.